Oh, can I just say, um, Brett, who I believe is on the line, from yep. he's from Sydney, yep. and this is his first sentence. I just wanted to introduce you to Brett. And All right. I, no um, problem. Franka, Franka was also going to be with Brett, so I don't know if they're on the same line or not. So just um, let you know. Okay, sure. All righty. Um, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just go over a quick overview of the system again. And uh, we're in a, de a demo system at the moment, but we will log into the uh, chess moving site later on. But uh, okay. you're looking at, as admin user, an admin user would actually see this page here. These are all the registers inside the system. These icons are just highlighting if everything's uh, up to date or needs attention or needs review. But the admin user also has this user admin dashboard panel where they can build inductions, set alerts, do all these different things, which I'll, I'll go over later, but also send everyone some videos on all these different features. But you're looking at, in your system, you've got each of your sites right across Australia, whether it be North Queensland, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Perth, and so forth. And if you log in and you're actually a, you know, from the Sydney site, for an example, when you log in as a manager, this is what you would see, these site icons. Uh, these site icons here are the exact the same as the admin section, uh, but now filtered for the site of uh, Sydney or whatever site that you're in. You're looking at, as a manager permission level, which you all will be, is that you also have this management icon where you can select that, and you also have your own admin panel where you can actually manage all your individual employees for your sites you know, build inductions, set alerts for yourself, all these different things. But I will set, send step-by-step -step instructions as well if you wanted to actually, um, you know, try to do these kind of things. But it's, it's quite easy um, knowing that also you've also got this help section that actually shows you how to do everything as well. So it, uh, so that's an overview for those, uh, Brett and um, uh, the other person that's just there, what you can actually do if you're located in Sydney. Uh, next time we actually have a training day in our offices, uh, you can more than welcome to actually come and have some seat where you can actually learn the system for the entire day. So it, um, and then that way they get a really kind of good turnaround of uh, how it actually all works. Now, uh, one of the things that's actually going to help you get up and running quite quickly, and I've already actually done it in your system. Uh, today we're actually going to talk about how to log an incident and the whole incident process that the system has. Uh, it's one of the features inside the system that uh, a lot of councils and disability services, NDS and so forth, really liked uh, and uh, also have had a lot of input in. So it's actually uh, quite detailed, but at the end of the day, it's very, very simple to use. So if I actually select this Add Incident form, you'll see that there is a QR code here. Well, what I've actually done in your system is I've actually developed already an incident form for a QR code. If you actually scan that QR code, if you've got a QR code reader on your phone and you scan that QR code, it will actually bring up the chest moving incident form. So what I'll do is, I, I think I've sent this to you, Melissa, but I'll send it out to everyone again. So I've actually made this what's called public. So what what is public? That means that you can actually get that form and print it out and I'll actually also, Melissa, I'll send you this template here. So this template that we've actually created, this sticker template. So I've actually got this template and what I'll do is I'll change that to your QR code and I'll put four of these on here and you can actually, we'll send them to everybody and you can actually put them in a, uh, a printer and print them out on the sticker. Uh, we'll send you the directions where you can actually pick up these stickers from as well. So instead of going down to uh, Officeworks and paying $75 for a bundle of 100, uh, we found a place where you can actually pick them up for $5 and get a bundle of 100. So you could literally print these out and stick them on a wall and all you have to do is get the employee to scan that QR code to, to log an incident. That's how easy the system is for the end user. So as managers in thinking, okay, how are we going to train our employees how to do this? It's very, very simple. All they've got to do is literally scan this QR code to log an incident. I've even developed a vehicle safety checklist. Again, I've made this public. I've related this to every single site. 
you could technically, if you wanted to, put a checklist like this in each one of the uh, of your removal um, trucks or any kind of vehicle. And again, you, I've made this public. If you scan this QR code, it will actually bring up the checklist on your phone and you're not even logged into the system. So I've made it public. What that means is that you do not need a username and password to log that. And I've done the same thing for a hazard as well. So you've got three of the major kind of things that all you have to do is actually scan a QR code. Now I'm saying, to play with it. Really beg, good. beg your pardon? I've had a play with it and it's really good. Yeah, it's very easy to use, isn't it, Melissa? So so now, like, say for an example, all your sites don't have to be scared about, well, how do we use this thing? So all they're going to do is literally scan a QR code. Now, I've also developed one, I'm developing one for you, and you would have seen when I was doing that before, Melissa, as I was, when you come on, I was actually doing one for maintenance for each site. So again, you can actually scan a QR code and log maintenance and all and, and I've made it public so all you have to do is scan a QR code that's how easy it is so it um so when say for an example so you've put this QR code the, the QR code that I'm going to send you and you've stuck it on the wall you can get your employees or you stuck it in every single truck and you just say in the case of an incident basically scan that QR code they scan the QR code it opens up this form here even though they're not even logged into the system they can select, select the, the affected person from a drop down list. They can select the site that they're at. Actually, because it's public, there'll be a field up there asking for the person's name where they'll enter. They can select, say, say for example, from a drop down list of incident types. They can enter location, even more detail of that location. All simple fields for the person to actually fill in. The activity that they're actually doing time and date of the incident, so reported time and date and actual time and date can be different, that's why there's two different things, they are mandatory because they've got highlighted here. If they provided first aid and describe what they did and who actually did it, did they receive medical treatment and so forth, location of incident and then save an example, you could actually educate your employer, uh, your employees, the IIF person responsible would be yourself. So, you know, get them to select your name and select add. Or they can leave that blank. It's not a mandatory field. So they can leave that blank. Anyway, it's going to come to you as it is. So it's, um, and they can leave all these blank as well. So they can actually just fill out those Excuse basic me. fundamentals. They Excuse can. me, Phil. Can I just go back to that responsible person yep. uh, field? Yep. How hard is that to make it um, compulsory? Because, um, we, when we played with it in our office, yep. we just felt um, it would be beneficial to make that mandatory, say, the manager in the office. So if it's been logged, then um, it order, it, that has to be filled in so it goes to the manager in the office. Otherwise, yep. it might get missed. The, the only problem is there is that you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of people using this system. And if we oh, make okay. a mandatory for you, it makes it mandatory for everyone else and I will get complaint after complaint after complaint. Oh, so what you do is you just educate your employees that they need to fill that in. You'll see later this year there's going to be a process where in, in, in the procedure builder here, you'll be able to build a procedure process to say if this person gets injured or for any people from this site gets injured, it will actually automatically populate the person responsible here. So the person doesn't have to think who it is. But that's coming later on. At the moment, you're just going to have to get them or tell them to make sure to fill that in. Right, yeah? Okay. And they need to hit that and hit the plus sign to take it over here to the person responsible. So it, um, it's, just, it's just something it's, uh, it can't be changed at the moment, but it is getting updated. So okay. they can then go through, depending on what they've actually selected as the type of incident up here, it really depends on the form it actually occurs down here. So again, not mandatory fields. So and they can actually enter those in there, add and proceed. And what it does, it brings up where they can do nature of injury. You can select from all these different things. Now you can actually add, Melissa, these here, nature. A manager or an admin user can add that there or take some away. So it's a good idea, say for an example, to add all the things that you, you want them to select from from the nature of injuries. 
okay? Again, body part tip. So you can add to a body part or take away some of the some of the body parts, but not the, the mandatory ones. But you're looking at this here, you could add, say for an example, right arm, left arm, right finger, down to the fingers, like a lot of like councils do. So then the person can actually select whatever it may be that's been injured, add and proceed. What that's done, it's gone red. Remembering that person has only scanned that QR code. It's gone red and gone into the register here. So when it goes into it, when it's first logged, it, it, it goes red. In the user admin dashboard and the alert section, you can actually set up alerts for each of the sites to actually send you an alert. And that's, I'll send you that, Melissa, what, in how, you, how you're going to do that. So it's um, literally you would actually select that, select the type of alert as incident, select the site, whatever it may be, even though we've already done that, we'll select one we haven't done for. And this actually highlights the managers and employees from that site. So you can actually select someone, whoever it may be, that you want to actually receive that. We'll select this person here. And you'll see that the time frame over here is zero for immediate, one for the next day, two for uh, two days time. So you're looking at, you want to select that, say for example, as zero. It's already defaulted to zero. You can actually select more than one person to receive the incident by selecting, say for an example, holding the control button down and selecting another person. But you can also escalate this, and we'll go over this again, Melissa, so you can actually make it that the initial manager gets this incident, and the escalation process here is if this person hasn't investigated it by one day, it will actually go to this person. You can escalate it again if you wanted to. So the escalation in an incident is means that if the person has not done the investigation, and that is selecting this icon here. Now, instead of you trying to think, oh, hang on a sec, how does this all work? I forget what he was saying. There is videos on this inside here, but to make it easier for each one of you managers to actually do this, Remembering, it's easy for the end user to actually um, use a login incident because all they've done is scan a QR code. You've made it's already been made public. It'll email alert you, but anything it's been assigned to you, and even that alert, it'll automatically go here in your to-do list. So instead of you thinking, how do I actually use that incident register? All you need to do is select your to-do list when you get that email alert, and that incident will actually be here and hopefully there's one in here so I can actually show you how that would actually work. Anyway, what it'll do, if there was a log, you'll see that, see how there's this pad icon just here? Exactly the same as that pad icon in the incident form. So literally you're going to select that, if this said, say for an example, incident, which it will, and for the site of whatever it may be, you'll actually have this pad icon and that will automatically be like that and open up this form. So instead of you thinking, how does that register work again, all you literally need to do is select your to-do list and it'll actually have a pad icon because you've been made responsible. You can actually go through this form. You can select the person who's actually... Sorry, sorry, yep. Phil. Yep. Franka here from Sydney. Just a quick question. When you said you've been made responsible, so this, what you, the screen you've got open now, is that the default then for all incidents of that kind will then come to that person? Is that what you're doing there? Yeah, no, this is like, particular... that's right. It, it, what, what it yeah. is, is defined by site. So if a person, if a person here selects the yeah. site of Sydney, right here, for an example, right here, we'll just, we'll, we'll pretend Rose Hill, Sydney, right here. Yeah. In this user admin dashboard, in the alert section, if we actually set up an, an incident alert for the site of, we'll pretend that's Sydney again, and we selected save or escalated that again to head office, whatever it may be, okay, after yeah. one day, what that means is that that alert's been set for the Sydney site, so therefore when that person fills in this form, automatically when they actually select that site and log that incident, it's going to send that person's been set in the alert an email. 
so that that field that you've got later uh, further down that it nominates a person that's not really that relevant then if we always only have the one person that's responsible for incidents that's exactly right the, that's exactly right yeah. so you know technically that and that's that's part of the reason why that actually isn't mandatory because a lot of people yep they get their employees to fill that in but if they don't fill in it's not that bad because what we're going to do is set email alerts here that if they've selected your site, which they will, you're going to get an email alert anyway. Right here. And it's also going yep. to put it in your to-do list. Okay. So so when, when you actually get that, basically, you're going to select that pad and it's going to open up this incident form here. And you're going to complete the form. You're going to go through here. Again, you're going to select your site date of investigation, how it happened and so forth, and you're just going to select if it's a very simple form. This is the same form that New South Wales councils use uh, because they insisted it was inside the system and the benefit was all the other clients. So here you can actually just go through here and, you know, you know as I say in the video, and if you do watch the video, I highly suggest that you do, there has been some upgrades into this section, but the basic fundamentals of these forms are all the same. So if you watch the video, it really highlights exactly how it works. The only thing the video doesn't show is the QR codes. So it's, um, but if I actually, you know, in the video I actually say, go down the contributing factors and ask yourself, was the supervision involved, yes or no? Yes, it was involved. It was the person, da 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 da, and you can go through. Was, it, was the safe operation procedure the cause? Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You can actually go through here. So it's up to you can, to go through this list here. Right a lot of these will probably be manual handling for you for, for your process, you know, especially manual handling would be a big big thing for you. So you can actually go through that and you select just go through that. You've also got you know losses today, so you've got this kind of process here or this time of work and so forth. This will actually coordinate with some other stuff later on, but at the moment it doesn't. I'll show you where the um, the return to work and all that kind of stuff is. So once you finish that section here you've got corrective recommended actions. So it's, uh, and again, you would actually go down here and you can actually develop a really good report. So it's, um, and then you can go through here. Again, you can actually select a person responsible for the, the corrective measure or the supervisor's report, which I'll show you next. So it's, um, so you're looking at, um, the, you're, you're usually doing this. So as managers, you would probably be doing this. So it's either that or, you know, it's up to your process where the head office does it. But you submit the report. When you submit the report, it'll actually go orange now. Again, you've actually got that icon there. The person's actually been made responsible. Again, it'll automatically put it into that person's to-do list. So as managers, if I actually just go to this Canterbury site again, you've got your to-do list here, but your management icon is here. But if I actually select this incident register, it's actually got basically your incidents relating to your site just here. See how all these are incidents relating to Canterbury? Yes, and they're also related to council, but council's actually made what's called the general site. And because at the moment you've got, you know, basically all your employees related to other different sites. So you really, if you're in the sites of Sydney, you're only going to see incidents in your register relating to you, relating to your individual site. And again, you could actually select this, you know, basically uh, this um, icon here and it opens up the supervisor's report. The supervisor report is basically developing a corrective measure. So you can go through here, answer these questions, go through here, develop a corrective action plan, add comments, date signed. But the main thing that you want to be completing here is the actions to reduce the likelihood of that incident occurring. Now, you might do this in consultation in your meetings that you might have, in your WHS meetings and so forth, but depending on the incident, you should be kind of doing this pretty much straight away and then maybe reviewing them in your, in your um, management uh, meetings. So you can actually set an action for someone, for someone to do. So you're going to say, yep, I'm going to put designated walkways in there because someone's been hit by a forklift and the person that's actually going to do that is this person here and I want those designated walkways done by tomorrow latest add more fields. 
and also we need signage in there on that kind of stuff. So I want, you know, basically this person here to get signage and yep, I want that done by tomorrow as well. So you can select as many things as you want. And what, what, when you're actually selecting this person, it's automatically going to email this person to say, hey, by the way, Phil Bamford, you've actually got to make sure that you've actually um, put designated walkways in our warehouse and it's got to be done by this due date. Not only will it email Phil Bamford, but it'll also put it in Phil Bamford's to-do list. They can't forget it. Same thing with Aaron. Anyone that's been assigned something, someone, so not only will it, will it actually um, put it into, um, send them an email, put it in there to do this, but it'll also go into the action register. So see how that's gone green now? And we'll go over this again. That goes green. You can send that to, um, it basically bundles up all that information, which is if I select the view icon here, it actually bundles that information, depending on how detailed you've actually done those forms, obviously. But it, it literally sends this information in an email to wherever it may be that you've actually put it in that email. Or you can generate all this into a PDF with your logo on it and send it off to someone. So just remembering this PDF icon, any single time you've entered data into the system in any single section, when you select the view icon, you can generate something into a PDF and it turns into a document with your logo. So if I just go back to that register now, you can, if you wanted to, use this green plus sign to add any kind of you know, doctor's information, doctor's certificate, suitable duties, anything that you wanted to do inside here and upload it here. Just remembering you can actually upload a Word document, a PDF, a, a graphic, whatever it may be. But if you do have a PDF, um, you're looking at um, uh, and, you, and you've scanned a document of some sort, when you scan that document, um, you've got to uh, know that um, open up that document again and save it and save as a PDF. So because if it's an attachment, it's still, still not a true document. All right, so you can actually upload data inside that. And again, what that will actually do in the view section, it'll actually show it here in this uploaded documents. So it, um, so the register, red, orange, green. So red means that it's been logged. Orange means uh, it's been investigated. Green means that a corrective measure has been developed. So what will actually happen then if I'm a manager, if I go to my view section, if I actually select my management icon, you've got this action register here. This action register will actually hold, because Aaron Gisberg was related to the site of Canterbury and he's been responsible, see it's actually put that in that register there. So you can either use this register here, but again what it'll actually also be, if you're being made responsible, you only have to select your to-do list and it'll actually be in your to-do list to do. So it won't be in this one because I'm not logged in as that person that's been assigned. So, but you're looking at, if some, someone's been set an action, if I can find something, here's, here's an action. If I, it'll actually give that pad icon just here like this. I select that and here the person can actually update that action that they've implemented. And yes, this person's implemented Review date for continual improvement, you want to maybe, if you wanted to, set it for next next year update. So it went just automatically, I've logged that incident and went into the, put this person's to-do list. Actually, I wasn't, because I've assigned it to myself, there was something there. And now that's actually taken that out of my, out of my to-do list. Not only is it actually taken it out of my to-do list, but also if I actually go to my action icon here, it's actually updated that item there to green to say it's been completed. So the beauty about the system is that really technically, instead of you thinking, well, how do I use these registers and how do I use this system? When you log into the system under your username and password, you're not going to see all those icons up the top. You're just going to see this as managers. And that to-do list is going to tell you what you need to do on any given day. And knowing that, save an example, when your employees log into the system, if you do want them to log into the system, all you have to do is say to them, select the to-do list. If, you, if you've been assigned an induction, 
or you've been signed a checklist to do, it will be in their to-do list. All right. If they, and that's where, you know, it's things have changed now with the QR codes, where they could have to come in here to log an in, uh, hazard or log an incident, where you can actually make it, it doesn't even have to be like that or do a checklist, is that these QR codes now is, you know, you, you could actually get them to log an incident, log a hazard, do maintenance or wherever it may be via a QR code and it automatically goes into the person's responsible's um, to-do list and also into the other register. So if I actually, you know, I'll just go back to this quick links page and what I'll do is also send, I'll send a PowerPoint presentation as well as probably a good way for you to all learn, uh, especially um, basically um, uh, Franka and Brett, what I'll do is I'll send a, a PowerPoint presentation which goes over, even though it is quite lengthy, but it goes over every single process inside the system. I would send that to my agents or any kind of company wanting to learn how to use the system after kind of a presentation like this, which could be a bit of a blur sometimes, but I'll send you that and then you can actually go through it at your pace. So, but you're looking at whether you logged in as a, uh, a manager or an employee or an admin user, you will have this help section where you can actually click on that help section. You can actually, if you wanted to search, save an example, incident. So how, how do I do an incident or whatever it may be. So it, um, if I see. So it's, um, how do I call accidents and incidents? You can select on that. And what that's going to do, it's actually going to bring up that video. Yes, it's a bit of an older video, but it's exactly the same as it does. So you might want to watch this video again because it goes over every single kind of process. Remembering this doesn't have the QR codes. So it, uh, if you still don't, if you can't find what you're after via, you know, typing in, you can actually go through these categories and go through here and actually select all these different things and it'll bring up step-by-step -step graphics on every single process inside the system. You do have training videos here as well. You can watch all these training videos. They are a little bit old on it, but I will actually send some other um, videos which are up to date with all the new features inside the system. But if you've still got any problems, you've got this submit ticket item here where you can submit a ticket. You can enter as many tickets as you wish. So you just enter the ticket, trying to log this, how do I do that again, whatever it may be, and I can actually send the response or send you a video or step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. So it, um, so there's always support how to do it, but really at the end of the day, the end user, especially with your system, all they're going to be doing is for logging an incident is literally, I'm going to be sending this out to you. You can print these out. You can stick them on the wall or stick them on cards or whatever it may be or stick them in your trucks and you can just get your employees to scan this QR code and it will open up the incident form and it is easy as. I just come back from Newcastle Jockey Club, which is you know the race course up at Newcastle, and they've had this system for a while, but they really weren't logging incidents and hazards or doing checklists or doing maintenance. Part of the reason was is because the people weren't going to log into the system and do that. So with the QR codes, now that I went up there and spent a day up there and basically developed their QR codes just like I've done in your system. And I've actually printed them out and when, say for example, the next day when we had training, instead of actually spending like four hours in training, the training literally took less than an hour because all I said to them is I, stunk, I printed out the QR codes for an incident, printed out the QR codes for a hazard, printed out QR codes for uh, maintenance, and printed out a QR code for a checklist and I made them all public. So I made them that, that you can actually, anyone can actually scan them and do them. And what they did then is that I got them just to say, they say, okay, how do we use this system? And I said, see those bits of paper in front of you? Scan that QR code. And I had a fellow there, he would have been 60 something, pretty much computer illiterate. He scanned that QR code and it brought up the incident form on his phone and he filled it in and he goes, this is easy. Yeah, we're going to use this. And you'll find that same thing with your employees. All you've got to do is tell them every single one of them got a phone. 
is all they have to do is download a QR code reader on that. Um, I'll send you some instructions on that as well. And basically, they scan this QR code, it will bring up the incident form on their phone. And they just fill it in. And once they fill it in, uh, and I'll go over with, with Melissa uh, in setting up all your alerts inside the system here for your system to basically email alert the appropriate people uh, that incident's been logged. And it'll also put it in your to-do list. And you're looking at, um, just makes it simple as. All right, so, you know, so the end user experience now is, it's, uh, it doesn't get much easier than doing, say, for example, scanning a QR code. Now, if I just go back to this one site, and I'll just show, show you what I was actually developing uh, before as well, is that, again, as a manager, this is what you're going to see. You've actually got this management icon. You've got the same admin panel as, say, for example, head office or an admin user. But this is all filtered, filtered for the site of Sydney or Toowoomba or Melbourne or whatever it is, whatever site that I'm in. You also have this build and management icon where you can actually select this build and management icon. This is where you actually make things public. So, but you won't have to do that because, or you, you might want to do it, say for example, for a checklist that you can create. And then you can actually come in here and select add to public page. And I can actually select, okay, I'm in the site of Canterbury and I want a checklist from the site of Canterbury and that's the checklist I want or whatever it may be. Let me select another one, save, even though I've already done it. So what that means is that the QR code, so you can create a checklist inside the system, but when you create a checklist, it automatically creates it into a QR code. Again, if you scan that QR code, it will actually bring up this checklist on your phone and you're not even logged into the system. So a good example for a checklist that your company would definitely do is a fit for work checklist. All your drivers have to do it before they actually start work. So you build a fit for work checklist and basically print out that fit for work checklist. Or Melissa, I can put it in for a frame for you if you like and send it off to you. You can send it to everyone and basically what they can actually do is scan that QR code and they're going to do a fit for work checklist and that you can actually relate it to the truck that they're in. So Thank you. And, and to the site. So and then you're looking at it's just it just makes it easier an easy experience for everybody. So it um so that is how the to to use the incident register. But again, you know, when you log into the system, if you hit the help section and if you actually select the videos down here, and if you actually watch how to log an incident and all that kind of stuff, this accident register, you'll see that it goes over quite detailed of how to do it. But please note, in this, act, this register here, the to-do list and the QR codes is not into this, in this register. It talks about mainly about the register, whereas really at the end of the day, you just got to select one icon now, the to-do list, and it'll tell you what you need to do and your employees are going to scan a QR code. So is there anything else you want me to go over, uh, Melissa? Uh, yes, you read my mind. Um, now, every month um, there's a representative from each office that um, calls in to a national openness committee meeting. So I'm just wondering, can you show us, because I, I know the system is capable of, sen of setting up meeting alerts. Yep. So A, can you set that up? show us how to set that up, and then B, um, for that meeting, the guys need to report on the LTIs from each office, and I know that the system um, illustrates, has you know, great graphs and, and all of that, so that the guys can just prepare their report to bring to the meeting each month. Yep, so what you do is, whether, whether you're a, um, an, a, an admin user would actually select this report here, but if I actually go, say, for an example, to um, the site of Canterbury, again, you select your management icon, and you've got this report down here. So if I select that report, what this has actually done, this has actually given me a report, but it's now filtered this report for the site of Canterbury. You can change this date range to be whatever it may be that you know that that you're um, that uh, you're doing for that month. So, and 
and it filters it for that there for that, that for that time frame. So here, if I actually go down here, it actually has injuries that cause days off work. So you're looking at basically, if I selected that, that would actually bring up all the people affected for that work, and you could print that out. So it um, here it actually highlights how many days off work they've actually had. Now, where that where does that figure get get it, get the information from? Oh, by the way, it just if I just go down here, it does all these graphs for this site. But you're looking the the better thing for 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 you, Melissa, is that yeah, they can come here and maybe print off this these kind of things if they wanted to, or these statistics here. You can actually select these incidents as well. So if if you see all these kind of anything that's actually highlighted in blue, you can actually select and all bring up a series of of different reports. So if there was first day, so it's um. It, um, but you're looking at, so you can print out all these different things. So it's, um, let me not just turn off that phone. Oh, God. It's, um, but in your section, Melissa, you've got where it actually picks up an overall report, which you would be doing. So if I select that report there, this is actually the report for every single site. So if you can see, you can come down here and you can actually see that. This is the site, whatever it may be, uh, of Canterbury that we're having lots of incidents at. So it, um, so you're looking at, um, you could say, for example, then you know get Canterbury to print out their reports so they can actually show you all the activities that's actually causing that. Because remembering, the Canterbury report is filtered for the site of Canterbury, so you could actually compare. You would print out one for head office, get all your um, sites to print out individually. Um, but you've got injury days that cause no days off work. So you're looking at where this figure actually picks these figures up here is, if I go to that incident register, if I actually go to the investigation process, does this employee need time off work? And select yes, it'll actually give you the estimated time days off work here. So four days, one week, whatever it may be that it is. So that's where that figure is picking that up and you can actually select save that report. If you actually filter into this section here and you've actually completed that, yes, that will go green inside this to shut that off, but it will also go into this new feature return to work and it will go into here as red. So as managers, you can, if you want to do, select update, remembering is that your, your, yours is filtered and you can actually develop a return to work process here if you wanted to. Again, like I could send you a video on how to do this. But um, yeah, this is a brand new feature here. So, it, um, so there's a couple of modifications coming into this as well. <coughs> but it's actually picked up those, that estimated time off work so you can actually change this kind of process here but what this is also doing is if I actually select view next to, to that section there and if I grow graph, it'll actually graph that person's process back of that individual person. So you could, if you wanted to, print out a report and every single little you know, return to work process to see, okay, this is where they started and this is where they're going to, so as in back. But again, Melissa, what I'll have to do is do a little video for you. Okay, so. But um, in the series of reports you're looking at, um, maybe it's better for each one of your sites, remembering when you log in as a manager, this is what you're going to see. Select the management icon. Yes, you've got that one there, but it's probably better for you to select this incident register here like this. This is now filtering for your site. Go publish register, download all items or down, download from a date range. CSV, again you would actually select your date range and publish. So this is probably a better report for you to actually do for each site, Melissa. I would def I'd definitely say this would be best because this is a lot of uh, uniting care and all that kind of stuff. They wanted this in this certain kind of format for all these government kind of process. So it's actually quite detailed. So what this does is that literally 
you can, you, 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 even though it's actually highlighting the general site as well, you might want to filter, filter that kind of section and get rid of the general site so it's only got your Canterbury site on your Excel spreadsheet. But this has got all the incident number, affected person, if they're an employee, contractor, casual, volunteer, your site, so get rid of all the, the council, uh, which will be, that'll be um, just moving site. Uh, it'll actually say the activities, the machines, first date, it'll actually highlight all these different things and all the investigation process is actually done here and everything done. So that's probably the better thing for you to actually, to actually print out as well and take to your meeting. So it, um, so it, um, so there's a variety of different things. Um, again, Melissa, if you want me to show you how to do that and do you, do some step-by-step -step instructions that you can send out to the managers to say, okay, how to produce a report for your meeting, I can help you with that. Um, and you're looking at doing a, a meeting, whether you're an admin user or whether you're a manager, again, you would actually select your management icon. It actually brings up that same admin panel, but filtered for your site. If I select meetings, you can actually add a meeting you would schedule your WHS meeting and you say, save an example, it's over for your general site because that's what you're doing, one meeting. You would schedule the date. You would schedule your time. Again, you could actually do this as your individual meetings at each one of your individual sites. You would select your own kind of thing. Meeting duration, who requested, so Melissa. And then you can actually go here. Usually we'd actually you would just type in whatever it may be is here, and then you might talk about incidents. So you put your subjects in here. So you can put, you know, basically put um, all your different kind of things that you want in and select add more fields. You can actually tick this box to say that you don't want the employees to see this meeting in via their site icon, which a lot of people don't like to certain management meetings and so forth. But then you can actually invite your managers like this, Melissa. So therefore, what will actually happen, if I select save, it's automatically sent an email to all those people to say that there's a meeting need to be undertaken. So it, um, and if I actually just go, Here we go, so you're looking at, um, this is actually highlighting um, the meeting was requested on this day, this day, this day, whatever it may be. Here's my agenda topics. I can actually click here to say, yep, I'm coming. And what that does there is basically, um, if I go back to that, that uh, meeting that we just were creating, if I select the view there, See, so it's actually ticked that box to say that Aaron Works is actually coming. These people actually haven't highlighted that yet. So you could print out this template here, or the better thing for you to do is hit this edit icon. It's highlighted that Aaron Works is coming. You can add other people to this meeting if you want by selecting this here. But it opens up the template where you can actually enter minutes of that meeting. And out of every meeting, you've got people responsible to do actions. So you can save an example, you might talk about say incidents and all those different things of each of your sites. When you go through each of your sites, you might say, hang on a sec, there's a lot of incidents in Hobart. So you could actually say to the manager, they need to do this, 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 and select the person responsible. It's going to email that person out the action that they need to do where it's selected. But it's also going to put it into the action register as you saw, but again, to make it easier, it's automatically going to go into that person's to-do list as an action item. So it, um, so the person, you can complete this form. Here you can actually select another agenda item if you wanted to during the meeting. So it, um, I can select update. So that's actually signed off in that meeting. If I select the view icon now, it's got all the details already kept in the meeting. Who's responsible for all these actions? Good idea, you could print that out, take it to your next meeting and go, by the way, Phil, whatever it may be, you were supposed to do these actions, why haven't they completed? Or as or as managers, or managers would hit their management icon, the admin would hit the user admin dashboard, they'd go to the action register, 
you would see your action register here. You could go publish register. You could download uh, actions logged but not completed or overdue and all that kind of stuff and print out these actions. So a good idea, as I've done, in, I've suggested in this help section, if I go down here to tips, I'm start, going to start even building more and more of these. So if I select that there, it's actually got this step-by-step -step guide on really what you should be doing. So, so what I'm saying is that you literally go to your hazard register and you hit publish report. You go to incident register, you hit publish report. You go to reports there and publish report. And basically you go to your action register and you publish report. And what you do, so, so this is literally how you do it. So you go to your register. Every register has a published page there. You can even, if you wanted to, go to your employees and, and your training table and publish that as well to see who's actually done the inductions. So I've given you kind of like what you should be doing in the meeting, you know, just as an example. And you would enter those items inside here as a, a, a as topics. And you know, it's a great way for you to do continual improvement. So what, what you're doing in your meeting, you're actually reviewing yeah, you're printing out your action register, just like we just did then. You go to your hazard register, you publish that. You go to your incident register, you publish that as we did before. And, um, you know, it's just highlighting all these different kind of registers inside the system. So when you're actually doing your, you know, your management meetings monthly, whatever it may be, you can say, okay, here's all the incidents we had at our site. They've been closed off. We've got none open. We've got, here's all the hazards we've actually identified. There's none open. Here's all our um, actions that we've done. They've all been completed. So it's, um, as well as printing out your other graph reports and so forth. So you can see where incidents and accidents are coming from and set up actions. But really at the end of the day, all your information is coming from people scanning QR codes and logging an incident, logging a hazard or doing a checklist. So it's... Um, That's great. Thanks, Phil. Is it possible to do a really quick overview on inductions? Please. It is, it is. So you're looking at whether you're a admin user or a manager. Again, the manager will hit their, their management icon, but we'll select this one here. This icon here is inductions, where you can actually build inductions inside the system. So you can select add induction, select the induction as site. You can actually put an induction name and you can actually put an induction title. You can just resize that, whatever it may be. It's just like using a Word document. Put a pass mark and select create. That's actually put that into the register. I can select manage quiz. Remembering there is a step-by-step -step guide inside here as well. I can select manage quiz. Opens up here. Now I can actually you know, create my own induction here. I can even actually build yes, no answers if I wanted to, or whatever it may be that you want. And you can actually select the correct answer and go add more fields, okay? You can build as many as you want. The end result is what it does, it actually creates something like this. So you can actually create, make a text box, make it nice and neat. You can even, if you wanted to, upload graphics inside the system. You can even upload videos if you wanted to. So this is a quick manual handling one that uh, I think it's in your system. I think I put it in your system. So it, um, so that's where, so this, this icon in your admin section, that's where you create inductions, but I would dare say head office will be creating the inductions. Where you actually assign the inductions, if I'm a manager, I would actually come here and select management icon. You go to the employees register. You go to the training table. And what that does, it actually brings up the training table. Remembering this here is filtered for the site of Canterbury. So there's 11 people there related to that site. Your inductions are just here. 
you can assign everything with an email to all those people. So, but or you can assign all, or if you wanted to, you can actually search by a qualification or a site or a visit, whatever it may be that you want here. Knowing that this is your list of your employees, but you you could actually select manage induction to an individual employee. It's going to bring up all the inductions inside the system. You then actually go assign or reassign, whatever it may be. Brings up this pop-up box. You can sign this to be done by a completed date, remembering that it'll have to be a forward date, or it'll actually say, hang on a sec, you can't do it by that date, whatever it is, because it's not a forward date. And when it's got to be completed by, submit. Make sure you select finish to log it in. So if I actually just go here, I've done Phil Bamford here. Basically, at the end of the day, if I come over to here, it, it'll actually highlight that I, I need to actually, orange means that it's actually been, it's been assigned. Um, red means it's, it's overdue, and blue means it's completed. NYC means not yet competent or competent, whatever it may be. You can actually publish this register again. You can actually publish reports relating to all your employees. Now, what that's happened when you've actually, uh, you, you can actually email that individually out to that individual employee, which I would be doing that instead of selecting the sign all. So email that out. It'll actually email them out the inductions that you've assigned to that person with their username and password. And instead of them going, okay, well, how do I use this thing? You can just say, log into the system and select your to-do list. Any inductions that's been assigned or anything like that will be here. All they've got to do is hit that view icon. Brings up all their inductions that they're supposed to be doing. And then, so for an example, they can actually select that and they can actually go through here because I'm not logged in as that person that I just assigned it to and all kind of stuff that's just here. So, but it actually, thank you. It brings up an online induction here where the person can actually go through here and answer questions. Being that this is actually a, an induction on how to use the system. But again, it hasn't got the QR code feature here or the to-do list. I've got to update this. So it's um, been too busy developing new new items. So, but this will be updated. So it, um, but it does actually highlight a lot, lots of different ways how they can actually use the register. But really, it's instead of them actually um, um, knowing how to do all this kind of stuff, instead of doing this, really the QR codes and the to-do list is made this kind of obsolete. That's not a bad induction for you to actually get them to do because it actually educates them on what they should be doing. So it, um, so they can go through this quiz here. And I'll just quickly go through here and finish this one so you can actually see what it actually does. So this is actually an induction on how to use the system for a manager. So it is relevant to, to, to you, uh, you as managers. You should actually assign this to yourself and do it because really it actually tells you how to, how to use the system. It's a training course on how to use the system. So it, um, Melissa, that might be a good thing for you to do straight away. So it, um, and you're looking at um, here, when you've, a person's actually completed it, it actually tells them the result here. They can actually select on this. It brings up what they answered, right or wrong. They could print that out and learn it again. You do, you would reassign that again. It's not, you know, some people go, oh, can't we make it that it just tells them what they um, answer right and wrong and, and then they, uh, when they're doing the question, so they can just do it and uh, get it done. Well, it's not an induction and it won't count as an induction. So you need to assign it again. Phil. Sorry, Phil, just a quick question from Franca here. Yep. Um, with the induction, is it possible with the QR code, so is there a shortcut, shortcut to a published form, is the induction, is, is that possible to be as a QR code or, or does that not work because it's a public published form? No, no, no. Okay. It's, uh, Franca, it's, someone... it's um, yep. basically with the QR code, you're exactly right. What, what yep. I've done is I've got the team at the moment developing a QR code for uh, inductions, chemicals, safe work methods, all their things throughout the right. system. Okay. Because like, wouldn't it be fantastic if you actually had, you built an induction inside the system, you made it public and you stuck it on a truck or stuck it on a machine or stuck it whatever it may be or stuck it at a site when they think they scan a QR code, you made it public, they, they do an induction online, bang. 
so without logging in. Yeah. So again, you yeah. So that soon as soon as I actually did all those other QR codes, okay. uh, the process is is that yeah, that's going to be in the next development phase. So coming soon. Yes. Alrighty. Okay. Thanks. So it um you're looking at now when when a person has done an induction. Again, if I select my management icon, and if I select my um, employee table, I select my training table. Yep, you've got all their, their their kind of results here that they've done, but in the employees register, if you select history, it actually highlights all the inductions that that individual person's done. Maybe I'll select my name so it looks a little bit more like that. Uh, so they've done their induction. Here you go. Here's all the inductions that Phil Bamford's done. Right here. You could again select on this and bring that up and see what they entered. You could print that out, sit down with Phil Bamford and say, by the way, you got this wrong, whatever it may be, and then reassign it. Okay. So it, um, just in a, in a future upgrade, I'm actually making it that the person can actually redo it, redo it, redo it so many times and then an email alerts you that you can sit down in consultation. But again, that's coming in the August upgrade. So it's, um, this employee history holds everything relating to this employee. So anything that's related to that employee is in their history. The August upgrade, you'll be able to print out a report here on that individual employee and it'll highlight all the different things, all the to-do items that you've assigned that person, all the notifications or anything that you've actually got inside the system to do. So it um so it'll be a, it's, a, it's it's the system is more than just a safety system. It really is a total management system. So that icon is this here in your training table in your employee register training table to assign inductions, and the history is in this history just here. So again, if I actually select that training table, and if I actually select the, you'll see that every single register has how does this register work. If you select that, it will actually take you to a step by step guide. On how to do things, alrighty. So, or you can actually type in, you know, into into the um, into the filter here, inductions, and it'll bring up all the things relating to inductions. So yeah, so it um, so what I've actually done again, just just highlighting um, before because I've actually got to go into another meeting. It um, I've actually developed these QR codes and I've made them public. So I've sent them to you, Melissa, but I've also done one now for maintenance, which is probably the number one feature inside the system. So you're looking at, you can actually create a maintenance request form for a site. Or, or, so you can actually add requests. So I'll give you an example of that. You can develop a maintenance request form for saying that your lights are not working, bumper bar, need service, all that kind of stuff for your, for your trucks. You can actually here, instead of location, you might put the name of the truck inside here, right here the number plate. Right here, you can just add that and select update. What that does, again, it actually automatically creates a QR code. If you, you can make that QR code public. You could get your drivers to do it because there's other trucking companies that are getting in to do this. It opens up this form where they can actually log maintenance relating to whatever it may be. They can even enter other stuff and they can submit. So they're going to fill in a very, very simple form. You can actually make it uh, email or wherever it may be, but it automatically goes into what's called the maintenance register as read, complete with work, or work order number. And here it can be farmed out and done and the system, you can actually enter the cost and the system automatically develops a complete thing uh, report in an Excel spreadsheet so you can actually see where all your costs of maintenance are coming from instead of going, okay, well, hang on a sec. So you could actually technically go, truck ABC is costing us $20,000 a year. It's cheaper for us to lease a new truck. So it's... Um, so it, um, but I've also got a video on that. So Melissa, I'll, I'll keep, just keep on sending you some videos, and you can farm out the ones that you want your employees to see, or the people, or all your managers to see. Sorry. So right. it, um, yeah. all right. But um, so Melissa, maybe we can actually have a catch up just on what needs to be done next uh, on your side of things at, um, at some time late, later this week, or whatever it may be, and um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm in Sydney this week, so maybe next week. Is that okay? Okay, definitely. That'd be good. That'd suit me better. So it um, Great. all right. So it um, but um, hope that wasn't. Uh, but I will send you all that PowerPoint presentation. So therefore, it's got all the even the upgrades of the QR codes and everything on that. Um, it's a good. Yeah. Yes, it is 177 <laughs> slides long, but some of those slides you you literally two seconds and you go through. It's just the headings. So it will educate you on a more slower kind of process of every single register inside the system as a and how the entire system works. So I'll send that to to all of you and then it will give you a really good idea. And 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 Brett and um, Franco, maybe uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send you an email next time we actually have a training session for clients in our offices where you can actually sit down here for the day and learn the system. Um, I did tape this, so I'll send the recording to everybody, but um, I do got to go because I've actually got um, someone actually waiting at my door. <laughs> That's okay, right. Phil, just really quickly, can you email me when you do have that Sydney training session? Because it might be something that some of them might want to fly into. So. Okay, definitely. No worries. Alrighty. Okay, thank you. Okay, see you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Everyone, bye.